All right, so to start with, I've linked a slideshow in lecture.etacuni. Can you guys let me know if you can access that slideshow? Yeah, I've got it. Got it. Excellent. Indeed, thank you. All right, so before we begin, I'm just going to introduce myself. My name is Felicia Venucci. I'm one of the AMC officers at AMC. Um, I'm also one of the assistant teaching managers here for Eve University. Um, so mining is something that I particularly enjoy in EVE, uh, and the MR Mining Campus is one of the relatively new campuses given the age of EVE University. Um, many people are not aware of AMC, so I hope from this class you take away some knowledge about what the AMC is about um, and the operations that they perform there, and hopefully it sparks your interest in mining and even joining the AMC. So I only have four rules that I ask you to follow for my class. Um, it's that you please set your microphone to either push to talk or mute and mumble, and that you ask your questions in lecture.etacuni. I also ask that you preface your questions with a cue so that I can easily identify questions from answers. And I also request that you stay docked up in a station or a citadel for your own safety. Uh, this class has no practical portion and should only last between 30 to 45 minutes. It should be relatively brief and give you a good insight into the inner workings of the AMC. So in this class, I'm going to be covering the history of the AMC as well as its leadership, uh, which plays an important role in the day-to-day -day activity at the AMC. Uh, also covering the services operations that occur at AMC, as well as our security and safety regulations. I'll also be covering the various hangars that you may or may not have access to as an EVE University member based on the title that you hold within EVE University. I'll also explain to you how you can join uh, the AMC as well as our policies regarding alts. So before we begin the class, if you have never heard of the AMC, I'd request that you place an X in lecture.etacuni for me. So we have quite a few people who didn't know that the AMC existed at Eve University. Next, I'll ask you to place an X under the line if you are currently a member of AMC at Eve University. Oh, yeah, I see lots of familiar names. Got lots of you guys, your acceptance mails, I'm sure. So I hope... All of you guys walk away from this class with some sort of information that you didn't know before, either if you hadn't heard of the AMC or if you were an AMC member. Uh, hopefully you come away from this class knowing something that you didn't beforehand. And I will ask again towards the end of the class if you have learned anything. So first, I'm going to touch briefly on the history of the AMC. The Amar Mining Campus was originally founded in March of 2012 by three individuals of Eve University. Those were Sorante O'Leary, Ubermensch Invictus, and Vigor Starstein. Originally, the AMC was founded with the mission statement uh, that the AMC would enable a cooperative effort in mining operations and educates its members about the most basic fundamental activity in EVE Online, without which you wouldn't have your ships mining. If you've taken my Mining 101 class, you know how imperative mining is to the uh, lifeblood of EVE. Um, on top of that, AMC is a nomadic campus, uh, meaning it's changed locations at least five times previously and is prone to changing locations again in the future. Next, I'm going to be covering leadership. Um, the AMC manager is Jefferson Spence. He is the one who handles all of the background operations that make the AMC run and tick. And there are also five officers, which work slightly differently than other campuses. Um, other campuses usually have officers with specific tasks delegated to them, such as education officer or events officer. However, um, all of the officers at AMC participate in running the day-to-day -day operations of AMC, including hauling the ore, handling of buybacks, um, barge purchasing, and hangar stocking. 
Um, those officers include Kyrant, Natan Emerson, Serendipity Wolfson, and Ducio Grandoli, and myself, Felicia Venucci. I'm going to go ahead and link those to you in lecture.etacuni. You may consider adding these individuals to your contact list um, so that you have a more direct approach to contacting them. So the offices are the individuals that you will likely be dealing with when you are looking to purchase barges um, or see them more on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, Jefferson handles more of the behind-the-scenes parts of AMC, um, making sure everything runs smoothly between us. So AMC as a campus has several services that it offers similar to other campuses. Uh, the first and most important is the MR Mining Campus Buyback Program. Uh, this program it functions as, as the lifeblood of AMC in that you can sell your ore, gas, ice, and minerals directly to the AMC from our home system. The pricing that we offer is slightly below GEDA pricing. However, it is based on maximum refining skills, so you get, the, you get a much higher value for your ore than you would if you were to refine and sell it yourself. Um, and we do include the small fee because it helps continue the um, the service uh, in the future because it's it's not a cheap service to offer. We have to haul all of the ore ourselves as well as handle um, the logistics behind the scenes. So it can cost quite a bit for us. Um, so I've went ahead and linked the wiki page associated with the AMC buyback. And I've also included a step-by-step -step visual guide for submitting the buyback. After your uh, first or second buyback, it'll become very simple, second nature to you. Um, sometimes your first one can be a little difficult, but I promise after you do the first one or two, it becomes much easier. And the final link I linked there is going to be what it feels like when you submit your first buyback. Uh, the second service we offer at AMC is our refining service. Um, several of our officers have perfect refining skills, implants, um, and citadels that are available to process your ore into minerals if you are a budding industrialist. Just like the buyback service, we do include a small fee for the service, um, but you get much more out of it than just the fee. It's a very small amount in compared to into what you get compared to doing it yourself. As a member of AMC, you're entitled to free T1 modules and ventures. We provide all of our new incoming members with ventures. Um, any of our any of our members who are at least freshmen can get those ventures for you. We also have all mining related modules are available uh, for free through the AMC hangars. Again, accessible by freshmen. We also provide Miasmoses, T1 Exploration Frigates, and several other ships for free um, through the AMC. And I'll cover how you can go about uh, receiving those towards the end of the presentation. We also provide free mining crystals as well as command burst charges for our booster pilots. Um, mining crystals include both T1 and T2 crystals. And they are available for free in the hangars. Either a freshman can get either one of those for you if you do not have the freshman title yourself. Uh, one of the most important and most requested services we have at the AMC is our half-priced mining barge program, and that we sell retrievers, coveters, and procurers at half of GETA price. Uh, we do this in replacement of a ship replacement program. Um, it makes it much easier for you to get started when you're looking to uh, begin your mining career. Uh, to go along with that, we also have uh, almost any mining-related modules. Um, if they are not in the hangars, they are not free, but we also have T2 modules that you can purchase as well. If you're just starting out, we also have the Loner Barge program. Um, basically, if you're just starting out and you cannot afford a half-priced barge, we will loan one to you until you can afford it. And at the end of a one-week period, you have the option to either return the barge or purchase it for half price. I'm sorry, for two weeks. Two weeks.
Uh, we also have several member services available at the AMC, much like other campuses. Um, some of those include hauling programs, salvage buybacks, and skillbook reimbursement programs, specifically um, the gas harvesting skill reimbursement program. For anyone not familiar, the gas harvesting skillbook can cost upwards of $25 million, I believe. So um, you can get that refunded fairly easily through Zers Solaris. Uh, details are found at the link I provided in lecture.etechuni. We also have the Swift hauling service. Um, if you're a new member to AMC and you are looking to relocate, um, you can take a look inside that thread and fill out the requisite form, and I will handle your hauling personally. Jefferson Spence also runs a loot buyback service on his own. Uh, several of our members do run mission sites as well as relic and data sites. So if you have loot that you've collected through that and you would like to sell it, uh, the loot buyback service is an excellent way to do that. And I'll take this point to kind of um, address the point that we don't just mine at AMC. Uh, we also do missions. We frequently dive through wormholes. Uh, we harvest gas and ice as well. We do a lot of ice harvesting. Uh, ice harvesting in particular is a very uh, popular uh, fleet activity we have. Um, and wormhole gas harvesting when we can. Sorry, my dog is broken. Uh, so before I continue, I'm going to take a small break. Does anybody have any questions about the services offered through AMC? If you have those, you can ask those in lecture.etechuni. Um, Rohan asks, who is in charge of the salvage service? Um, I do believe that is the loot service, uh, the loot buyback service, and that would be Jefferson Spence. Rob Johnford asks, how long does it take to purchase a barge? Um, usually it doesn't take very long. If you can uh, find an officer online, um, usually we tend to be around AMC area. If you find us online and send us a message, um, tag us in AMC Ops. Uh, if we see it, we will take care of it. Uh, usually it doesn't take very long. Um, another way to get a hold of us to purchase a barge is through our Slack. We have a channel in Slack called Staff Service Requests. Um, you can send us a ping there, and that usually uh, gets it taken care of fairly quickly. And I'll talk about our Slack application process towards the end of the class. So if anybody else has any questions, um, Feel free to ask them now in lecture.etechuni before we continue on. Holy smokes, questions. Uh, Mayena asks, aren't I stationed at HSC? Um, no, I am not stationed at HSC, although I do spend some of my time there as part of the cross-campus initiative. Uh, Daniel Lockhart asks, if we want to mine an AMC but keep our goods at another campus, can we? Um, I don't, maybe I don't quite understand the intention of your question, but uh, there's no rules that says you have to keep all of your things at AMC. Uh, Eric Zor asks, can we dock at a player-owned station for higher base reprocessing? Um, you, that is an option if you want to do that. But like I said, we do have a service. Uh, all you have to do is fill out a form, create a contract, and you basically get full full-blown minerals back. It, there's uh, the highest possible you can get. So if you have all of the skills, the implants, and access to a POS with uh, a POS or Citadel with the highest reprocessing percent, I guess you don't have to. But um, yeah, there's nothing that says you have to submit it through the uh, service request. So next, I'm going to be covering the operations that uh, go on on a day-to-day -day basis at the AMC. Our bread and butter fleet is called a BYOC fleet or a bring your own can fleet. Uh, BYOC basically means you come and join the fleet, you mine what you'd like to, and you handle hauling the ore on your own. 
Um, these fleets are organized by volunteer FCs, um, and it usually involves an orca or a porpoise pilot who can provide boosts to your mining efficiency. Usually those boosts, um, if not max, are fairly close to maximum. They can increase your mining yield by up to 80%. Uh, again, like I mentioned, it means that you handle all of your own ore hauling. We do not provide any sort of hauling service for your ore during a BYOC. Uh, and it's recommended that you tip the boosting pilot, but it's not required. The standard amount to tip is typically 10% if you are looking to do that. But again, it's not necessary. You can join these fleets simply by placing an X in amcops.etacuni if you have access to that channel. There are no restrictions on who can join these fleets. All AMC members are welcome. Uh, the second kind of fleet that we tend to run are called shared cans, or SCs. These are also organized by volunteer FCs uh, who arrange for a booster, hauler, and scouts, if needed, uh, to be available during the operation. Today, we just had a shared can, and I know several of you were there with me. Anybody can run these shared cans. It does not take an officer. It does not take a freshman or a sophomore or a graduate. Anyone can run these fleets. If you know somebody who boosts or hauls, Usually all it takes is reaching out to them, and they're usually more than willing to help you. But basically how shared cans work is all of the ore is pooled, collected, and hauled, and then sold through the AMC buyback service. Every member who participated as a part of the shared can is paid the same ISK per hour based on the amount of time they spent in the fleet, regardless of what ship they use. What this means is if you come into a fleet with a venture, if you're a new player, or with a barge, you essentially get a higher cut of yield if most of the fleet is in barges or exhumers. So you can make significantly more ISK in a shared can fleet than you could on your own if you don't currently have maximum yield or the best ship available. These are usually scheduled ahead of time, and information about upcoming shared can fleets are usually available in the message of the day of amcops.etacuni. Just like BYOCs, all AMC members are welcome, and there are no restrictions on the ships that you are required to bring. With that said, however, there are, more sh there are certain ships that are uh, preferred for fleet purposes like shared cans. Uh, for shared cans, we tend to prefer people to fly either coveters or hulks if possible because those provide the highest yield. And since uh, hauling and boosting is already accounted for, you don't need to necessarily worry about uh, hauling things away with a retriever or a Mackinac, or worried about tanking with either a procurer or a skiff. We also have, as I mentioned, some uh, mission fleets that run on occasions, although those are not typically our bread and butter fleets that set us apart from other campuses. We also have wormhole diving fleets and ice mining fleets, although ice mining fleets typically work in the same exact manner as BYOCs. There is nothing fundamentally different about an ice mining fleet. It just depends on where the fleet is located, either in an asteroid belt or in an ice belt. Before I continue, does anybody have any questions regarding uh, BYOCs or shared cans? If you're typing a question now, I suggest you press enter and then you can complete your question if you need. Holy questions, Batman. Okay. So Val Kneer asks, does running or boosting BYOCs regularly count towards the requirements of sophomore? Um, I would say they do. However, uh, the caveat to that is it needs to be noticed by other AMC officers. So if you notice an officer is around the same time as you, or if there are other graduates or sophomores in the fleets you tend to boost, you can use those individuals as references that you are regularly providing content for the AMC.
Baina asks, how often are the fleets? Um, shared cans tend to be less frequent than BYOCs. BYOCs are the bread and butter daily fleets. Uh, those are typically flown most times of the day, most days of the week. If there isn't one running at the moment, usually all you have to do is ask in chat if someone doesn't, if someone has a booster and doesn't mind providing the boosts. Usually they don't have a problem providing boosts, assuming that you would be the one to run the fleet. It's honestly very easy. There's not much to it other than to invite people when they ask. Uh, Pakran asks, um, I mentioned that the campus has moved several times. Why is this? The location became too known. Um, the reasons for the campus moving uh, varied dependent on the time that they moved. Sometimes it was due to uh, changes in market fluctuations due to ore pricing. Other times it was due to war or times when the whole uni itself relocated. Having said that, it has been quite a while since the AMC moved. Although I will say it never originally began in Amar space. The name Amar campus was simply to throw people off. We do mine in Jita in case anybody is interested. I'm just kidding, the joke, but it's not really, which I'm going to cover next. Security. So with the idea in mind that AMC is a training community, we attempt to protect our members' safety by mining in undisclosed locations. The AMR Mining Campus is the only campus not listed in the UniWiki. Um, as part of this, uh, we also limit market interaction within five jumps of our home system. Uh, by disallowing market activity, it limits the amount of traffic coming through in order to provide additional materials through the market. Again, like I mentioned, if you're interested in mining, there is no reason for you to need to purchase anything. We provide everything you need at the AMC. There's no need for uh, market contact. Um, having said that, market contact also includes use of the market as well as contracts. It does not cover player-to-player -player trading, so if there are other players in the AMC who are looking to sell items directly to other members, that is completely allowed. We also have a strict no PVP engagement rule within five jumps of our campus. This makes us a very boring campus for war targets to venture into, as when they come into system, usually when there are a few systems away, we dock up. So usually it just looks like we do nothing at the AMC if there's a war target around. Makes us a very, very boring target for war targets. Uh, as part of continuing with this security, we have a set of OPSEC rules that we follow, which I will cover next. So the OPSEC rules of the AMCs specifically include not disclosing the location in any channel, either public, private, including Mumble. We do not link to AMC locations uh, by dragging and dropping in any sort of chat in game. We do not link kill mails associated with the AMC HQ or within five jumps. We do not live stream mining when we are in the AMC area. Again, like I said, this also includes over mumble. As part of that, we use the NATO phonetic alphabet to refer to names of uh, systems and places. So, for example, Jita would be known as Juliet, even over um, even over Mumble, but specifically, um, in in our chat channels, we refer to we would refer to it as Jita. Uh, we would refer to it as Juliet. Sorry, we would not refer to it as Jita. Even over Mumble, we refer to it as Juliet. So, when multiple systems begin with the same first letter and the same uh, with the same first letter, we add the first consonant. So if the two systems were Jita and Jossa Meadow, Jita would re be referred to as Juliet Tango, and Jossa Meadow would be referred to as Juliet Sierra. It takes a little bit of getting used to when you first join the campus, but once you realize there's only a few systems within five jumps of our home system, it becomes very easy to uh, identify which systems people are talking about. We also use our own channel for war target reports. And we also do not create corporation bookmarks. 
For this same reason, we also do not have standing fleets like other campuses do. They are specifically closed fleets, which you must request access from in AMC Ops. So even though we try to practice safe rules, it's all of the standard rules of mining apply at AMC. Those include do not mining AFK, uh, sorry, not mining AFK, keeping an eye on local and AMC ops for war target information, being on Mumble during fleet operations, keeping an eye out for gankers, specifically code. Uh, ships that are included in that list are usually thrashers, catalysts, or tornadoes. And it's typically recommended that you dock immediately when war targets or gankers are seen or announced in AMC ops. It might be easy to think that you can quickly run back to your belt and pick up your ore that you left behind, but if they're one system away, chances are they're going to be on you before you realize it. So next, I'm going to be covering the different hangars that uh, various members might have access to at AMC. The first hangars I'm going to cover are our alpha hangars. Those are accessible to members of EUNI with a freshman title. There are uh, several uh, containers in the alpha hangar, including general supplies, which contains T1 salvage and exploration modules. The mining supplies container, which complain, uh, contains T1 ice and ore mining supplies. The ship's container, which includes T1 exploration frigates, ventures, and shuttles. And the mining crystal container, which contains T1 and T2 mining crystals, as well as command burst charges for both mining and shield boosting. Next, there is the Theta Hangar, which is accessible to sophomores. It has two containers, the General Supplies Container, which has T2 ice and ore mining supplies, as well as the Ships Hangar, which has uh, T1 industrials, including the Miasmos, available for members. Um, all of the items listed in those hangars are for free, and just because you cannot access the hangar yourself does not exclude you from their contents. You can ask an AMC Ops if another member can get the items that you might need. Uh, and just to make a note here, it does not require an officer to get items for you. Anybody with a freshman or sophomore title can get items for you from the hangers. Uh, the only thing officers can do that normal members can't is sell you um, higher level T2 modules, T1 strip miners, and mining barges. The next thing you might be interested in is actually joining the AMC. So we only have a few requirements. One is that you be a member of Eve University and that you fill out the application form. So I've linked the application form there in lecture.etacuni for you. Once you've filled out the application and been accepted to AMC and the location of AMC has been disclosed to you, we ask that you fly here with only a small, fast ship. Um, either a shuttle or a ship with less than two seconds of a line time, specifically while we're at war. Um, don't bring anything that you cannot afford to lose to war targets or gankers. And if you must bring items, make sure to use an alt hauler or ask other members to ferry any items to campus. Again, like I mentioned before, we have a hauling service um, specifically for um, new members, it is free regardless of the distance um, your items are located at. I'm just going to go ahead and link that again for your sake. And remember that we have all of the items here at campus uh, available for you that you might need to mine. Uh, finally, when you're joining the AMC and once you've been accepted, you might want to consider joining our AMC Slack. As I mentioned, this is one of the fastest ways to contact officers and get things resolved as quickly as possible. I've linked the application form for our AMC in chat as well. As I mentioned, AMC is open to all EUNI members as well as their alts. Um, however, we do not accept um, alumni members who are not EVE University members, nor do we accept uh, people who have a plus five or plus 10, 10 standing to EVE University. This rule does not apply to alt corporations who have had their standing set higher. 
Any alt that intends to participate in day-to-day AMC operations must be an approved member and have access to AMC ops. Meaning if you intend to join a shared can or BYOC on an alt, they must have access to AMC ops and must be able to place an X in the channel in order to receive an invitation. You can't simply request that they be added if they are not a member of AMC ops. Any of the facilities provided uh, to AMC members are also available to approved alts. All you need to do is disclose the alts you would like added in the application form or ask an officer after you've joined to add the alts to the access list. So having said all that, I'm going to go through and take questions that you might have now, and I might ask one or two questions of you as well. So Rohan has a question. For hangers that say contact team member, are we supposed to contact an officer or a sophomore is able to access those hangers? Um, when that specifies contact a team member, it specifically means an officer. Uh, those are password protected um, containers uh, that usually contain items of much higher value. Lexara asks, does the AMC accept Alpha clones? As long as the Alpha clone is a member of EVE University, they will be accepted to the AMC. We do not have an Alpha-only policy. Eric asks, what is a good way to figure out tipping in a BYOC? Um, Eric, what a lot of people do is they pool their OR and they just roughly calculate the value either using the in-game tool or EVE appraisal and simply tip 10% of the total value. Captain Doom Verpio asks, when I joined my two alts, how would I know if they were accepted also? They were on my application, but were out of court for ease of transport. Um, if you listed them in your application, they do have access to AMC ops. All they have to do is join. Um, I remember you specifically, Captain. I believe I added both of your alts for you. Hyronia Aldrad asks, I am very new to the game and to EVE University. I have a ton of questions. Is there someone who can chat with me and mumble after this rather than me hold everyone up? I'm sure uh, I know I would be more than willing to answer any questions you have after the class, Peronia. Um, although if they're related to AMC, I don't mind answering them now. Lexara asks, how was the Battle Venture fleet? Um, I unfortunately was not able to attend that particular uh, event, although I imagine it was quite fun. I was there for the uh, previous event we had earlier in the week, um, the Corvette Battle Royale, and it was quite fun. So I imagine they had just as much fun with Battle Ventures. Anytime you can shoot something in a ship that's made for mining, it's going to be really fun. All right, so if I have taught you anything that you did not know previously about the AMC, can you please place an X under the line with a brief explanation of what you learned? Yeah, so it seems like everybody kind of had something they learned. Even some of my AMC members that I know who are around here learned something. So that me, makes me very happy to hear. All right, so before I conclude the class, I'm going to link a class feedback form. Um, I would really appreciate if you guys fill out this form to let me know how I'm doing. Contains several, uh, just a few basic questions about uh, the content covered in the class and whether or not I answered your questions thoroughly. Don't be afraid to uh, be honest. If I didn't answer your question, don't be afraid to tell me I didn't.
But having said that, I appreciate everybody who came out to join in my class. I hope you uh, see that several people learned something. I hope everybody learned something from the class, and I look forward to seeing you at AMC. Um, if you have recently filled out an application, I will be um, kind of going through and processing applications um, after the class is over. I look forward to seeing some of you new faces around AMC.